Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 13. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with independent game development. In this episode we're going to look at tile collisions and we're going to use them to stop our player from walking over our walls. I'll show you what I mean. So if we just run our game and move our player around we see that uh, our player can just walk anywhere they like at the moment. And this is a good time to just recap last episode as well. Last episode was an art episode, we drew some tiles, so there's not too much code to uh, go over. So we'll just jump in straight away and start coding. So one thing I'd like to do before we start is just lower the speed of our player a tiny bit. And that's just because when we scaled up our graphics we didn't change the speed, so now everything feels a bit too fast. So we'll also do it for our slimes, so let's go into our slime entity, which is in slime.lua, and let's just lower the speed to say 1 for now. And in our player, which we just create in main.lua, uh, let's just change the speed here as well. Let's say 2. Give that a go. Okay, that feels uh, a bit nicer feels like we're not skating around as much. So this isn't the last time we'll be adjusting speeds and things, but just for this episode I wanted to uh, lower things a bit, make things a bit easier to see. Alright, so tile collisions. This is just where we check which tile the player is standing in, and we use that to um, say whether they can move or not, or do something else uh, based on the tile. For this episode we're just going to use it to determine how the movement works. And the other thing we're going to do is add in a little bit of debug information. So inside of main.lua we're going to create a new variable called debug and we're going to set it to true. And the thing to note here is that this is actually a global variable. And we tend not to use too many of these because global variables are global. They can be accessed by anyone or any piece of code we write and so it's very easy to change them and it's kind of hard to work out how our code fits together. Um, but for something that's truly global like whether the game is in debug mode or not, a global variable feels like the appropriate thing to use. So let's make use of our debug variable and we're going to do that inside of graphics sprite.lua. And down here where we draw our sprite in the draw function, let's just say if debug then do something, and that something we want to do is love.graphics uh, rectangle. Let's just uh, go with a filled rectangle. Oops. Fill. Um, and we're going to draw it at the same x and y that we draw our image, but it's only going to be one by one. Uh, that's one by one pixel width and height, or virtual pixel for our purposes of our game. And uh, the reason we're doing this, um, we need to be... Ah, that's a very good point. We need to make sure we draw it inside of our... inside of our view context, so it gets scaled with the rest of our graphics. There we go. And the reason we're going to do this is so we can find out where the actual x and y position of our sprite is. So now we can see we have the small white uh, dot at the top of any of our entities which use our sprite class. And what this means, um, or is this is where the x and y of that sprite is. And we need to know where the x and y position is so we can use it for our tile collisions in a little while. And you can see that it's currently in the top left hand corner of all of our images. And that's a bit of a problem because if we check uh, whether the top x and y corner of our image collides with something, we're not actually inside of the image because uh, we have a lot of transparent pixels. So we're going to shift the x and y position to be in the middle of all our images instead. And the way we do that is when we draw our image, we're just going to grab hold of the image from inside of the uh, sprite class. Uh, so self.image and we'll just get the width, divide it by 2, and we'll store this in a variable called x offset, and we'll do the same thing with the height. There 
there we go. And if we just uh, minus X uh, offset and Y offset from our image positions, it should shift the image to be in the middle, or rather shift X, Y to be in the middle of our images rather than in the top corner. Let's just give that a go. Very good, we can now see that our dot, our guide dot, is in the middle of all of our images. And that's exactly what we wanted. And we'll just test very quickly that if we go into uh, main.lua and set debug to false, we see that we no longer have the guide dot on any of our images. But let's leave it turned on for now. Um, because it might be useful for working out where exactly our player is or where our game considers our player to be. Okay, so tile collisions. We basically need a way of checking which tile um, we're standing in or whether the area we're standing in or about to move into is a valid tile to be walked on or not. And the way we can deal with this um, is by, well, two things. First of all, we need to update our movement for our player. And just to remind everyone, that's inside of Logic AI Movement Keyboard Movement. So here's our movement strategy. We need to update this piece of code. And we also need to add a method to our room to tell us whether a location inside of a room is walkable or not. And that feels like the right level of abstraction for the code we um, we want to write. There's a couple of different ways we could do it, but just being able to um, you know, pushing all of that responsibility for whether an area is walkable into the room class just feels like the right place for it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's look at keyboard movement. So we're going to pull out two more variables. One called dx, which will start off at zero, and one called dy, which will start off at zero. And the d here stands for difference. So I don't like to use too many uh, abbreviations, I like to make my code pretty obvious, but dx and using d for delta or difference is a pretty common, it's a common enough abstraction that um, I let myself get away with it. And if we just look at what this, remind ourselves or remind myself what this code does, we just check whether a certain key is down and we use it to change or update the position of an entity. So what we're going to change this to is where instead we're going to up update the dx and dy or the difference in x and difference in y um, based on whether a key is down. So if the uh, right key is down, dx is going to be equal to entity.speed. If the left key is down, then we want to be equal to minus the entity.speed. And very similarly for y, um, if the up key is down, we want dy to be equal to minus entity.speed, and that's just because our y-axis starts off in the uh, top left, or at the top of the screen at zero, so the uh, greater y, the further down we move. And again, down here, we just want to say dy equals positive entity.speed if uh, the player is going down. Then at the end of this function, what we'll start off by doing is we'll just do entity.x equals entity.x plus uh, dx and entity.y equals entity.y plus dy. And so nothing should have changed, we're just uh, pulling out some variables and capturing the difference or the change we're going to make to x and y every time our player moves. And if we run our game, we can just test that we're still able to move around nice and freely. Okay, so now let's take a look at our room. And our room class is in the room.lua module. And let's just uh, check what a room has. So we have a tile sheet and a tile map which we added quite recently, and this contains all of our tile information, so it's worth looking at tile map as well. And uh, let's just close a few other tabs here. Keep, let's try and uh, keep things nice and neat. So let's look at tile map. And t so tile map actually contains the information about where a tile lives on the screen. 
but tile map lives inside of our room, so we can just access we can access the tile map via the room class. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make a new function called walkable. And this is just going to tell us whether a tile is walkable or not. Uh, what kind of arguments does this need? Well, it would be useful. Well, first of all, it's an instance method because we want to attach it to the instance of a room, so uh, it needs self as the first argument. Uh, if we also pass in x and y, then that feels like uh, the right thing to do. So we want to say for this x and y position, um, or for the tile at this x and y position, is it walkable or not? And to start with, let's just return false all of the time. Let's make sure we attach this to the instance method, instance.walkable equals walkable. Okay, now if we look at keyboard movement, we need to get hold of our current room, and that is all kept inside of our game state. And actually with our movement, if we look at our entity class, with our movement methods, we already pass in our game state to all of our movement methods, we just weren't using it inside of walkable. Um, or sorry, inside of keyboard movement. We just weren't using our game state inside of the keyboard movement. So all we needed to do is add in that second argument here, so we can actually uh, reference the variable. And now we can just pull out our room, current room, and this will be equal to game dot map and map has a method called current room let's just take a look at that so map current room just um, grabs the room that the player is in out of our list of rooms inside of a map function and our game state our game state contains our map there we go so inside of keyboard movement, we should, um, yeah, we should just be able to access this, grab our current room. And now what we can say is if, uh, it was current room, wasn't it? If current room walkable, and this takes an X and a Y position, so we want to use our new, so let's uh, pull these out actually. Let's say new X is entity.x plus dx and new y is entity dot y plus dy. We want to say if the current room is walkable in the new x and new y uh, locations, then it's okay to update our uh, player or it's okay to update the entity that's walking with the new locations, so we can also replace these with new x and new y just to keep things nice and neat. Okay, let's run that, see what happens. And we can no longer walk anymore, and this is because our walkable method at the moment always returns false. But we've got a, a quick I don't know, we've got an idea of how our code hangs together, which is the way I like to do things. I like to uh, write the smallest amount of code to uh, run the game again and see what happens. So now all we need to do is make walkable actually do something useful rather than just always saying uh, we can't walk where we want to. So it would be good if there was a method on our tile map. Where are we? Tile map. Um, to actually get hold of our current tiles so that we can run some logic on it and decide whether whether it's walkable or not. So let's jump back into tile map and again let's uh, tidy up the tabs. So in tile map let's create a function and we'll just call it get tile. equals function end and for get tile we want self because it will be an instance method we want the x and the y values and we also need the tile size as we need to know the tile size in order to convert between the x and y coordinates and the actual tiles in our room 
So if we look at our draw function quickly, we can remind ourselves how we actually draw the rooms and how we access each of our tiles. So we have a great big string down here called map, which displays um, or represents how the room should be laid out, with each character representing a tile. And then for every character in our map, we, um, we loop through and we make a decision on um, what kind of tile we should draw. Uh, and in order to go from the index of the tile to the x and y location of the tile, we uh, we use these two these two lines here, and we almost need to do the opposite of this to get back to the uh, yeah. We want to instead of uh, converting from the index of our map to the x and y position, we want to convert from the x and y position uh, to the index of our map. So we need to think about how that will work. So let's just call the index i again, and this is actually going to be equal to the x coordinate is pretty easy. So this is uh, how far along we want to go in our tile map. And we can just do x divided by tile size, because that's how many tiles across we are. And we're going to call math.floor on this. And what this will do is it will get rid of anything after the uh, decimal point, and it will just give us a, a plain integer number, which is what we need if we want to use it as an index into a string or into an array. Um, so now we need to also add how far down we need to go. And so that's going to be, we're going to start off by doing the same thing, y divided by tile size. But because of the way our indexes work, what we actually need to do is move um, move forward by a number of tiles equal to the uh, number of tiles per row, um, and that's how we move down. So for each tile we move down, we've actually moved across by what we uh, referred to earlier as the, I think, tile width, but we can check down here. So tile width, and this is the actual uh, number of tiles wide rather than the, uh, the width of our tiles in pixels, so perhaps it's a bit of a confusing name. Um, but actually, let's, uh, let's fix it. Let's say tiles wide equals 50. Then up here, we just need to make sure we're saying tiles wide, tiles wide. Good, and up here we want tiles wide. There we go. It's better to fix things when we see them as long as I don't completely lose track of what I'm trying to do. Uh, let's just do it for height as well. So tiles, oops, tiles high. High, high, tiles high. Is 22. And we just need to make sure, do we use that anywhere currently? Not at the moment, so we should be okay to change it. Okay, so, ah yes, getting the index. So we are taking how many tiles along we are, and that's just x divided by tile size, or math.floor of x divided by tile size. And we also need to know um, how far down to go, and that's uh, y divided by tile size times uh, the number of tiles we are wide. And finally, we need to add one to uh, all of this. And that's because indexes in Lua start at 1 rather than 0. Okay, and now we can just return self.map um, sub, because because it's a string, not a table, we actually we need to call sub on it rather than using square brackets. And uh, we can just return the character at the i position. There we go. Uh, just like we do somewhere down here. There we go, character is self.map sub ii. So here we're just returning the, uh, the character at that position. And also let's make use of our debug function here. So let's say self dot um, last uh, got tile. 
equals i. And uh, let's just make sure we initialize that to something sensible down here. So inst.last got tile equals zero, or yeah, zero should be fine. And then when we actually draw our map down here, what we're going to do is say if we're in debug mode, then uh, if we're in debug mode and actually and i is equal to self dot last got tile then we want to draw a rectangle in the x and y position of this tile just so we know which tile we were looking up or which tile we tried to access so love dot graphics dot rectangle and uh, this time we're going to do line uh, so it only draws the outline uh, this will be self dot oh sorry tile sheet dot tile size this will be tile sheet oh no sorry let's just finish tile size uh, that should be the width and height so let's just do that uh, the width and height will just be x and uh, y the same x and y that we're drawing our tile at for this uh, index um, and the width and height will be the tile size which we can pull out of our tile sheet Let's make sure we add get tile to our instance. Instance dot get tile equals get tile. And now inside of our room, let's actually call get tile. Uh, this will be self dot tile map get tile. And this takes x, y, and we also needed to pass in the tile size, I think. Let's just check. Yep, tile size. So we can here just do self.tilesheet because we also have a tile sheet on our room. Self.tilesheet dot um, tile size. Okay, and if we just always return true for now so we can walk around again, let's see what happens. Aha, attempt to index field tile map a nil value room.lua line 7. Self.tilemap, let's uh, find out. Okay, it's just because we need a lowercase m there. Okay, this is working, but ah, we are not. Um, we're not drawing our debug outline in the right place, we're drawing it up here instead and that's probably because we're not using our view to draw it so it's not scaled properly. So let's just go into our tile map and fix, uh, fix that. Yep, down here we just need to make sure that we do a view and we do have a view available because uh, we pass it in. View in context and then we just pass in our drawing function. And as we're here, let's also uh, neaten this up a bit. Okay, now we can see that we actually highlight the tile that the game thinks the player is inside. Yep, I'm just I'm trying to work out if it's working. I think it is working, but so occasionally our player is. Uh... Nope, I'm not sure that's always working. Actually, hard to tell. No, it's definitely not working, is it? Because we can see uh, we can see it not working there. So let's just check out uh, our index method because there must be something off with how we're doing this. Ah, we're not flooring our y divided by tile size value to start with, so that will be a problem. 
In fact, that was the problem. Now it is working. So it's really important that we floor those values or we don't get the correct index. There we go. It was a nice, uh, it was an easy to spot bug this time, which is always nice. Okay, so now just to get something that works, we can store our tile, um, or this is more accurately our tile character. Um, in a variable and then we can say to start with if tile character equals and let's just check which characters we use for the floor so we use full stops and commas for the floor so we can start by saying if tile equals comma or tile car oops, equals full stop and in fact, we can just return this. And I'll just wrap it in some brackets to make it slightly easier to read so we know that uh, all of this is the expression that we're evaluating. And so this should return true or false based on uh, whether the tile character is equal to these two characters or not. So now if we run our game, we find that uh, we can no longer walk on the walls. Now there's a few things we need to do in order to, uh, in order just to finish up. So just testing that we can't run off the bottom of the screen and we can't. We can move into the next room, which is good. We can go back into the previous room as well. Um, but interestingly, if we try and run off the room in the uh, in the wrong location. What the game does at the moment, because indexes wrap in Lua, which means if you use a negative index, you start indexing from the other side of your array. Or at least I think that's how it works in Lua. Um, we're testing the tiles on the opposite side of the screen here, and it's not letting us walk. Um, it's not letting us walk through. Uh, so instead, we just want to make sure we're only ever using positive x and y values, because the way we've set up our game means that we'll only ever have positive x and y values inside of our rooms. So the easiest way to deal with that for now is to say if x is um, less than 0 or y is less than 0, then we'll just return false because uh, we can never walk below 0, 0. Or we can never walk below uh, x equals 0 or y equals 0. We just need an end on there as well. So that means we can now no longer walk outside of our uh, indexes at all, and it should mean we can no longer move between our rooms. Yep, which is, again, obviously not what we want. So to do that, let's just uh, take a look at the code which moves the player around. And that's in room.update where we say, uh, if the player's X position is greater than room width, then move them to the next room. But instead, let's uh, say if it's greater than room width minus self dot tile sheet dot tile size. So we're saying if you're in the last tile, then you move into the next room. And similarly, down here, we'll say if um, player x position is less than self dot tile sheet dot tile size. And the other thing we need to remember to update if we're doing this is inside of our map, we have the code that actually changes rooms for us. And one of the things this does is it resets the player's position. So let's make sure we put that equal to... Um, we don't have an easy way of getting our tile size of moment, so I'm just going to use 8, but we should come back and uh, refactor this a bit later so that we can use our tile size here in case it ever changes. But let's just make sure we put our player at 8 plus 1, so they're not immediately being placed into a position where they'll move um, into the previous room. And uh, again, for when we move into the previous room, let's make sure that we place our player at room width minus... Well, I'll do 8 plus 1 just to, rem again, remind, uh, remind me that 8 is the tile size. So let's uh, test this. Good. Nothing goes wrong if we try and run off of the first room. Then if we move into room 2, everything seems fine. If we move back, 
good, we go into room 1. So the only other obvious bug with our movement code is that if we move off the screen or off a room into a new room where there are some uh, unwalkable tiles, then we get trapped. Um, because everywhere we move is an invalid move or is, is unwalkable. And uh, this probably means we'll have to think about a bit more about how we move between rooms, but I'm going to stop here because uh, we've done quite a lot for this episode. The other thing we need to uh, think about is uh, just returning... Doing this test based on the character doesn't feel very nice. It feels like we need some kind of data structure to look after whether tiles are walkable or not. Um, and all of those things as well. But those are things we can perhaps look at in the next episode. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Remember to like and subscribe, that really does help me out. And thanks for watching. See you again next time. Bye for now.